Won't you sit down? You'll need more than mirror tricks now, Burdock. I guess you're right, Crim. How'd you know it was me? A good detective never forgets a voice. But you didn't think I'd come back, did you? Yes, I did, Crim. Again, your voice gave you away. I knew that was you who phoned tonight. Only, uh, you're 30 minutes earlier than I expected. That's where a good detective made a fatal mistake. I'm afraid you made the fatal mistake, Krim. Listen to that applause. I'll give $50,000 back play if I get a nickel. Say, I gotta phone the fight stadium. Pardon me. May I have a light? Why, certainly. Certainly. How did you like the play? <laughs> I thought it was a massive tripe. Well, I thought it was pretty good. That's because you know nothing about criminology. And neither does the fellow who wrote that nightmare. Imagine. Imagine the detective recognizing the murderer by his voice. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, the man only spoke ten words before the final scene. You, uh, couldn't remember mine in a week from now, could you? Certainly. But you five dollars, you couldn't. It's a bet. And whose money will I have the honor of taking? Oh, um... Oh, I'm Bill Devils. I'm not the district attorney. I'm afraid so. This is going to be a pleasure. <laughs> and now, a guests and fellow members of the Pen and Pencil Club, uh, how would you like to hear a few words uh, from the author of whose play you have just witnessed? How would you like to sneak out again and go someplace where there's music, eh? Before old Picklefuss starts spouting? Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure uh, to present to you the celebrated mystery author, Paul Ward. That's the bill. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Instead of making a speech, I'm going to ask a man who is an authority on crime to criticize my play. I'm referring to your eminent district attorney, Mr. William Devon. Because of a previous engagement, I must rush away. And I'm terribly sorry I won't be able to hear your speech. Good night, everyone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. It took you long enough to get your rap. Now we're going to be late for the fight. Now, Jake, don't talk like a husband. Remember, you're only my agent. Polly, that's a great idea. Will you marry me? You could save my 10%. Yes, and you'd get my 90%. No, thank you. This is a stick-up. Reach for it. Don't try any yell if you know it's good for you. Sure, be a sport, Jake. After all, you two are in practically the same business. Only he uses a gun. Yeah? What's his racket? He's my agent. I ought to let you have it, you rat. Don't sh sh shoot. Here's my wallet. All right. Get over against that wall. Hold it. Mr. Devons. Why didn't you know it was me? I, uh, I thought you'd recognize my voice. Pretty clever, aren't you? <laughs> Not nearly as clever as the detective in your play. Do I get the five? Thank you. You know, this is very cheap for a lesson in criminology. Have you a permit to carry this? Certainly. You ought to be ashamed of yourself holding up people at the point of a gun. Don't you know it's only a matter of time before an officer will come up behind you and say, Don't move, you're under arrest. Take it easy, old timer. I'm the district attorney. Yeah, and I'm the governor. Hold out your hand. No, just a minute. Tell him who I am. He's a dangerous criminal officer. Do your duty. You're dang tootin' a will. I guess I know a crook when I see one. 
Handcuff me to him, lady, while I keep him covered. With pleasure. Now, wait a minute. Hold out your hand, please. I will not. My trigger finger is just a itching, young fellow. You better do what she says. Oh. There. And let this be a lesson to you, my man. Crime does not pay. Right, huh? <laughs> Come on, get out. I don't see why we can't just go in and enjoy the fights like anyone else. Publicity. Famous authoress picks the winner. There'll be photographs of the both of you shaking hands all over the sport pages. Or the comic sections. Well, here we are. I told you to stay out of here. But I've got to see Ace coming. You can see him after the fight. If I catch you sneaking around here anymore, I'll have you a prison. Now go on and scram. Ace is a sensation in the ring. Won his last ten fights by knockouts. Should be a great bout. He has been carrying 20 years, and you're the first crook to ever put him on. <laughs> I mean, uh, first time I've used them. <laughs> Funny, ain't it? Me arresting the district attorney. Oh, yes. Very. Come on, get busy. Hold still. Yes, she is. Here. Yeah. Well, I'll be dang. Must have filed the wrong bracelet. Give that to me. Give me that file. Put him up here. This is Nick Nichols, your sports commentator, broadcasting from Hollywood Stadium, where the semi-wind-up is just about to start. Here comes another celebrity. It's that well-known mystery writer, Polly Ward, or in private life, Miss Pauline Ward. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you could all be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I'll bet. What a fine and what a finish. Just a minute, I'll let you hear from the wind. Say a few words in the mic, Tony. Okay. Hello, Ma. <laughs> Never let a glove on me. <laughs> now, with Tony Antonio, folks, winner of the semifinal here at the stadium. Ah, there's lovely Althea Ames, region picture star. Sitting with Slats Keith. Hey, you ain't fooling me. I think there's more to this than publicity. I'll bet you're going soft on it. Oh, you just sore because he's going to beat your fighter tonight. Maybe he is, and maybe he ain't. Here comes Ralph Waterman, he man star, and he's still wearing dark glasses. You see, Ralph and Ace Cummings were doing a fight scene for a picture the other day. Ralph didn't pull his punches, so Ace let him have one that gave him the prettiest shiner I've ever seen. Hello, Ralph. Who are you betting on tonight? Jim. But Ace is a three-to-one favorite. I'm still betting on the champ. Uh, that's nothing to do with that black eye, has it? That's my business. <laughs> hey, listen, what kind of stakes did you use on it? Run along, Nick. You're not being funny. Oh, come on, tell us. What does the star you? Is it Philly Mignon or just plain round stakes? This is Nick Nichols broadcasting from the back of his deck on the floor where Ralph Waterman just pushed him. Ralph seems to be a little touchy about that black eye, but I guess you can't blame him. Everybody's been ribbing him about it. Here comes Champ Madison and Ace Cummings now. Won't be long now. Race. Let's give him a good fight and may the best man win. Well, there ain't no question in your mind who the best man is, is there? I hope you kill him, champ. Come on. If champ Madison can beat Ace coming tonight, the title should be secure for a long time because Ace is his only threat. Hello? Hello, this is Nick. What? Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry to hear it. Oh, Dan. Ladies and gentlemen, I have some sad news for you. A few minutes ago, in a New York hospital, that great heavyweight fighter of yesterday, Joe McHugh, passed away. In reverence to that great fighter, friend and gentleman, I'm going to have the house 
like them while we count Joe McHugh out for the first and last time. Somebody over there. What's the matter? Somebody grabbed me by the leg. Well, don't look at me, lady. Oh, it's got me again. <laughs> hey, that's funny smelling perfume you're using. Yeah, you liked it well enough last night. What is that peculiar odor? Say, this is a four-bit cigar. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing, introducing the champion at 198, Tommy Madison. And in this corner we have, at 201, the challenger, A. Cummings! Dr. Cowley! Dr. Cowley! Cummings is still on the canvas, folks, for the first time in his career as a fighter. Oh, it looks bad. Just a minute, we'll try to find out what happened. Come on, we ought to get out of here. Wait, folks. Wait a minute. Yes, I just got a nod from the doctor here. Ace Cummings is dead, and it looks like murder. Quiet, please! Keep your seat! Quiet, please! Keep your seat! Not so fast, sister. But I've got to get out. I've got to. No, not till the police come, you don't. Come on, go on back to your seat now. Stay tuned to this station, friends, for scoop news on the stadium murder. This is Nick Nichols, your sports commentator. You going down there? I am not. Well, aren't you supposed to? I'm not going anywhere until I get rid of these handcuffs. Oh, yeah. Kind of thought I might get in on the excitement. Never mind the excitement. Here, file a while. Here's the latest on the stadium murder case. Captain Filson with the Homicide Squad has taken the office upstairs and is trying to get to the bottom of things. But, but, Doctor! All right, I know it sounds crazy. Uh, this is a pretty mess. <laughs> and 2,000 suspects down there that they can't hold much longer. I'd better call the DA. The Hollywood Stadium. Miss Polly Ward, one of our celebrities of the evening, has just been arrested and taken up for questioning. I don't know what they have on her, but stay tuned in and I'll find out. Grab that hatchet. All right, smash it. Come on, come on, come on. What are you waiting for? Well, I can't see very good without my reading glasses. Which one's your wrist? Uh, give me that hatchet. Where are you going? The stadium. Hello, Mr. Jeffers. I'm glad you're here. So am I. Remember me? I don't believe I do. Sure you do. Well, that's the what lady. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Yes, Miss, uh, Miss Ward, isn't it? <laughs> How are you? Very fine, thank you. Say, is this guy a suspect? Hey, you can't pin this murder on me. I've got an ironclad alibi. He's a friend of mine. Rather a close friend, isn't he? Hmm? Uh, oh, oh, these. <laughs> I was showing him how to put them on in a hurry. <laughs> we found he'd lost the key. <laughs> you think any of the boys will have a key that will fit him, Philson? Uh, Mason, see what you can do there. Did you say you put the handcuffs on him? Careful, Miss Ward, you're a murder suspect, and anything you say will be used against you. You've got me there, Mr. Devon. None of these keys will work. They're pretty old handcuffs. Well, I guess you'll have to file them off. Maybe I can open them for you. <laughs> you. Another five says I can. It's a bet. Right here, please. Hi. There 
you are. I'll take my five dollars back, please. Thank you. And now shall we uh, continue with the investigation? Hey, Mason, take my hat and go. You don't have to worry about Miss Ward, Phil. But she knew that Ace was poisoned before the doctor did. Uh, she ought to. She's written enough about the acrid odor of bitter almonds. The acrid odor of bitter almonds. Say, that sounds all right. You should have been a writer. Give that to Dan Toby, will you please? Acrid odor. Come on. And you, my brave man, may go home. Home? Nothing doing. I'm going to solve the murder for you. I know a crook when I see one. I dare say. Well, what do we do now? Find the murderer. Standing around here. Well, how would you go about it? I? Well, first I'd tell the crowd the doors are locked and will stay locked until the guilty person's caught. Hmm. Hmm. And you and the city would be swamped with lawsuits for false arrests. I can't legally hold 2,000 people. You can't let them go. The murder is among them. Just, uh, just about where, would you say? In a seat near the ringside. Check. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. I've just been authorized to announce that you can all go home. Excepting the people in the first three rows. I want to order something to eat. Eat? <laughs> yes. I was so absorbed in your play that I forgot all about my dinner. Hey, what do you expect us to do? Stay here all night? Huh? Keep quiet. We'll let you all go home as soon as we can. Come on, friends. Let's make the best of it. Oh, I see uh, Smiley Burnett, the motion picture comedian down here. How about a little entertainment, Smiley? Got a microphone? Right, right here, sir. Well, thank you very much. Right. Well, I didn't bring any instrument with me tonight to sing for you, but I'm going to do the next best thing. I want to tell you about the Indianapolis Speedway. There's a fellow there at the races the other day, had one of these microphones up in the balcony, and he was broad scattered and sounded something like this. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at Indianapolis, Indiana, for the big Speedway Classic of the Year. Yes, sir, there's 50 or 60,000 people out here in the stands. Wish all you folks out there in the air could be here to see this gigantic classic. Yes, it's going to be a fine race. The car's just warming up now. I want to make a few commercial announcements. Oh, I haven't got time. Here comes car number 61. <coughs> That's certainly a fact. Here comes number 35. <coughs> here comes two cars at once. I don't get the number now. <coughs> There's a couple of fat. Oh, I wish you could see. Here comes a little midget car by the stand now. <coughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a cute little fella? Well, looks like the race ought to be off here any minute now. Yes, sir, they're up the northwest part of the corner of the track. Ladies and gentlemen, let's check the flags out here in front. Here they go by the stand up. <laughs> There's one I bet on. Ladies and gentlemen, because of the many phone calls this station has received, this broadcast will continue throughout the evening, bringing you the latest developments in this unusual murder case. Stay tuned to this station for last minute news flashes. I think our little lunch is going to be interrupted. By whom? By a man in dark glasses. You know, there's something I can't figure out. What? Whether your eyes are blue or violet. You'd better stick to your murder case. Say, what is this? Dragging me up here like an ordinary criminal. This fellow just came up to me and... I know, officer. Tried to bribe you to let him go. Won't you hurry, Mr. Mortimer? Well, I've got to be at the studio at 7 o'clock in the morning. I want to get some sleep. Are you sure that's your reason? You don't think I killed Ace Cummings, do you? You got pretty excited tonight when Nick Nichols kidded you about that black eye. Why shouldn't I be? It's all I've heard for a week. It's getting on my nerves. Now, if you don't mind, I'm leaving. If you want me, you know where you can find me. Yes, at the ringside. But I've got to get some sleep, I tell you. You can sleep in your seat. You haven't heard the last of this, Mr. District Attorney. I see you haven't heard the last of it either, Mr. Mortimer. If you're going to start that again, I'm leaving. Wait a minute. You know? You know, I believe your eyes are blue.
They told me to tell you the captain wants to see you in the office upstairs. doing in here? Sneaking, huh? So you're the one. You killed him. You killed him. Why, you You're little... dead. Shut up. I won't shut up. You killed him. Here, what is this? Who are you? I'll tell you who she is. She's Edna Mayberry, a cast-off girlfriend of Ace's. She killed him because she was jealous of him. That's a lie, and she knows it. She came to his apartment last night and threatened us both. I caught her in here going through that cabinet. She was the one Ace threw over. He was going to tell the newspapers about it, and she wanted to stop him. Thought being turned on by a prize fighter might hurt your career, Miss Ames? It's absurd. Well, then, what were you doing in this room? Uh, oh, I followed her in here. She was snooping around, looking for something. Well, suppose you tell us what you were looking for. Nothing. Take charge of her. I'm sorry I made a scene, Mr. Devon. I was only trying to help. You see, I love Ace. We would have married soon. That's funny. You may go, Miss Ames. Have some candy? No, thanks. All you men think about is eating. Where'd you get this? Well, well, I don't know. I never saw it before. Where were you when they turned off the lights? Well, I was down at the ringside, right at the corner. Which corner? The champ's corner. I remember I had my tray sitting on the floor of the ring. Come on, I want you to help me. There's no fingerprints on this. Uh, Captain. Oh, please, Miss Ward. You know, we've got work to do here. And that thing there, it's nothing but a toy water system. But I tell you, that gun killed Ace. I know it. So you did threaten to kill Ace? I didn't mean it. Honest, I didn't. I was half crazy when I wrote that letter. Now, look, Miss Mabry. If you did do it, why not get it off your mind? Smarter people than you will try to get away with murder, but it can't be done. You know that. I didn't. I tell you, I didn't. Are you going to make it tough for yourself? After all, you did write this letter. Yes. And you did come here to get it in order to destroy it. You realize how that's going to look in court? Yes, yes. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying, but I didn't kill him. Bring him up to the office. Here's the kid that called me out of the dressing room. Yeah? Bring him along. You know, you can read all about this thing in the papers tomorrow morning. I'll excuse your rudeness, but not your ignorance. Now, you watch closely, and I'll show you how the murder was committed. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was just demonstrating how Ace was killed. Huh? Oh, oh, don't be alarmed. It's only face powder. Where'd you get that gun? In his basket. I didn't put it there. I never saw it till she found it. Well, we'll soon find out. Book him, too. No, you can't. He didn't have anything to do with it. I did it. Don't you believe him, mister. She's just trying to protect me. She's my sister. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Go on, go on. Well, after what Ace did to her, I shot him. <laughs> I see. You both killed him, man. Now, let's have the truth. The truth is, neither one of them did it. I didn't ask you. I'm telling you, I have a theory. I see. Miss Ward, would you step outside? You, uh, you folks with excuses, please? Uh, Polly, will you marry me? Marry you? Yes. Then I'd have the legal right to box your ears. Oh, a wife beater. No thanks, Mr. Devon. But I'll give you the solution of this crime if you'll listen to me. Oh, got it all figured out, eh? Yes. Champ Madison dropped that gun in the candy tray to get rid of it. Oh, you think the champ killed Ace? Well, who could have had a better reason? I don't know. With Ace out of the way, his title was safe for another year anyway. Mm -hmm. See anything unusual about these pictures? No, except they're not very good likenesses of the champ. The girl with him isn't bad. These pictures weren't developed by a camera shop. They were done at home. Oh. See the champ's initials there? 
What, uh, what does that prove? But the champ couldn't possibly have killed Ace. He could, too. I'll prove it to you if you let me reenact the crime. <clears throat> Lights! I can't pull the trigger with the boxing gloves on. <laughs> I knew that all the time. Then why'd you let me make a fool of myself? For five dollars. Oh! You get the pictures, boys? Let me see them as soon as they're developed. Uh -huh. Look at that. He was getting ready to shoot somebody. Get Slats Keefe. Yes, sir. There's my permit to carry it. Get in the air, will you, Joe? Quick. Listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen, and you'll hear an actual police third degree brought to you with considerable danger by your favorite sports reporter. What are you going to do with that gun, Keefe? Help you guys if you needed it. Thanks. Nick, I'll run you in. Ah, uh, I'm only doing my job, Phil. There's a couple of million people sitting up to hear this. Well, then it's time a couple of million people went to sleep. Now go on, beat it. All right. Say, if you guys think that I was jealous of that mug prize fighter, you're all wrong. And another thing, if I was going to kill a man, I wouldn't use poison. How did you know it was poison? Well, he wasn't shot, was he? And he wasn't stabbed. <laughs> you hold holding back something, Slats? No, oh, am I? Maybe you'll talk in jail. Take him down and lock him up. Yeah, but I gotta call yeah, my lawyer. You can call your lawyer in the morning. Hey, if you think I'm gonna spend the night in the can, you're crazy. Albert Keith, alias Schlatz Keith, has just escaped from the Hollywood Stadium. Yeah, he's wanted on suspicion of murder. Now send out a general alarm. Uh, here's, a, here's a description. Well, folks, it looks as though this case will be closed when the police find Schlatz Keith. This is Nick Nichols, your sports commentator, signing off. Good night. How about letting the boys get a picture of you two together? Picture? Sure, publicity. Mystery writer helps district attorney solve stadium murder. Why, it'll sell more books than her publishers can print. Do you mind? Not at all. We got something. Come on, boys. Over here, wait for the crowd. Ah, this is perfect. Stand right here. Oh, Mr. Devins, on this side, please. Yes. This is it, boys. Ready? Shoot. <laughs> oh, look. Huh? Some union men come with me. I'm coming too. You are not. You stay up here. Brrr, too many murders. I'm going to get out of here and I ain't coming back. Say, that guy ain't a slug nutty as I thought he was. I'm going to get out of here. Come on, Polly. I'm staying. All right, I'm going. Good night. All right, catch on. Yeah. You were stabbed in the back. Uh, here's what was used. 
sliver of glass. Pretty clever. His rag protected the murderer from cutting his hand and the same time kept him from leaving any fingerprints. Yeah, but look. He did leave a lot of footprints there. Don't look at that. No. Shh. Shut off your lights. Somebody's moving over there. It's all right. Look, it's me. It's Bill. There you are. Oh, Bill. The murderer frightened me so when he grabbed me. <laughs> it was I who grabbed you, Polly. You? Yeah. Well, the very idea. What do you mean, jumping on me, you big bully? Well, how did I know it was you? Well, it might be a good idea to look before you leave. Might be a better idea if you'd stay out of places when I tell you to. Look, there's a man over there by the body. Put up your hands, reach. It's only me, Devons. Don't shoot. This is Nick Nichols, ladies and gentlemen. Standing on the exact spot where someone stabbed Slats Keith with a sharp piece of glass. I thought I told you to keep out of this investigation. Oh, I'm not hurting anything. No? No. Look what you've done to the murderer's footprints, dragging that cord all around. Now get out, and get out fast. Okay. That is the gentle voice of the district attorney, ladies and gentlemen. He's a very pleasant fellow. Devins, Devins, come here, quick! Look! Dead in the Mabry. She's not dead. Just knocked unconscious from a blow on the head. She's coming, too. Don't, don't hit me. You're all right now. What happened? There were two men, and he stabbed him. Did you see who did it? No, it was too dark. I ran, and, and he hit me. Are you sure you didn't see? How could you when he hit her from behind? Yes, but she was struck on the forehead, you see. She may have a skull fracture. You better take her to the hospital and stay with her. Why not take her up to my apartment? I can have my doctor look after her. I'm sorry, but she's under arrest. Better call the coroner. You mean you don't believe her story? About the two men? <laughs> of course not. Here's what knocked her out. She ran into it after stabbing Slats Keefe in revenge for the murder of her sweetheart. Well, that girl's as innocent as a baby. You can't arrest her. <laughs> she's already arrested. Oh, Devons, I hate you. I never want to see you again. You know perfectly well she wouldn't do a terrible thing like that. Good morning. What brings you around so early? Never mind the innocence. You know what I'm here for. Toast and coffee? No. Edna Mabry. Well, good for Edna. I wonder where she went. I wonder. Well, if you think she's here, you're welcome to search the apartment. You haven't seen her? Cross my heart. All right, I'll take your word for it. Well, now that that's settled, how about having some toast and coffee? That's a swell idea. On second thought, <laughs> maybe it isn't such a good idea after all. You see, the, the maid just left for the day. Oh, don't let that worry you. You're looking at the greatest little coffee and toast maker in the country. Come on, show me where the stuff is. Oh, Bill. Let's stay out of my way. Oh, Bill, wait. Um, maybe I better tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. You see, I already have a breakfast date, and I haven't much time to get dressed. Oh, no, this is a fine. How do you do? Invite me to breakfast in one breath and taking it back in the next. Oh, well, I'm sorry. How about a rain check? I'll settle for two. Okay. Just, uh, just who is this fellow you're having breakfast with? Well, now, don't act like a house detective. Now, you run along and find Edna, if you can. Bye. He's gone, Edna. Oh, please forgive me, but, but the back door was open and I just had to see you. Oh, don't let them put me in prison. Everybody thinks I did it, but... Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, there, there, don't cry. I'll help you, but you must help me, too. Here, sit down. Now, try to think. You said you saw two men under the stadium, remember? Yes. Now, the second man, the one that was following Keith, can you describe him? No, it was too dark. Well, was there anything unusual about him? Did he walk funny or limp or hold his head in an odd way? Oh, think hard. Well, yes, there was. He, uh, he... Oh, I can't remember. It makes my head ache when I try to think. It'll make my head ache if you don't. Oh, I remember one thing. I saw Slats Keith slip that Ames woman an envelope. 
When was that? Why, it was when a policeman was taking him to the dressing room. I remember now I was hiding. Well, Thea Ames. Now, you stay here and don't answer the phone or the doorbell. Oh, don't leave me long, please. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. I know me, Mr. Devins, or the police might come and... Oh, please take me with you. If you don't, I'll... I'll jump out of the window. That's what I'll do. I mean it. Oh, all right, all right, but you can't go this way. Somebody will recognize you. Here, come upstairs. Now, remember, you're my maid and your name's Caroline. Yes, Miss Ward. Oh, what did I tell you about that southern drawl? Now, listen. Yes, Miss Ward, yes, and I won't forget, show sure enough. Yes, and Miss Ward, I won't forget, show sure enough. <laughs> That's better. Will you all tell me where I can... Oh, pardon my southern accent. I'd like to see Miss Althea Ames, please. Have you an appointment? No, but this is very important. It's about the stadium murder case. I'm sorry, Miss Ames won't see anyone. Oh, Jake. Hello, Polly. Can you get me in the studio? Why, honey, I can even get you a screen test. Okay, Ed, friend of mine. Come on. Come along, Caroline. Yes, Mom? You wait here. I'll be right out. Polly, Bill. Are you busy? Well, of course I'm busy. Where are you? I'm in Althea Ames' dressing room at the Regent Studio. Yes. What would you give for a clue to the stadium murder? I'd give you a great big kiss. Polly. Polly. <coughs> Polly, what's the matter? And then I saw this figure in the mirror and screamed. And then he hit me and threw me in the closet. Serves you right. Do you know what was in the envelope? No, I was going to open it in your presence as soon as I had the time to call you. Get to the studio gate. No one leaves the lot without being searched. We've got to find that envelope. Fill some you and your men round up everyone you can find in those hooded outfits. Did you get that letter? Sure, how'd you know? Never mind, just give it to me. Why, this is from a fight promoter. Yeah. He give me a chance for a comeback. I'm the guy with the iron jaw. Here's another one I found. Take off your hood, please. Well, this is a surprise. Take her down to the station and lock her up. And this time I mean lock her up. Oh, have a heart, Bill. The girl didn't do it. You know that. Now, listen, Polly. You're a great girl, a wonderful girl, and I'm crazy about you. But if you don't stop interfering in my business, I'll break your neck. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. That's all right, lady. I'll pick them up. Oh, wait a minute, boy. I'm looking for a certain envelope, one that's been folded. Have you it there? I don't know. Is this it? Yes. Can I have it? Oh, no. It's against the law. This is the mail. Well, then give me the address from it. Box 255. <laughs>
What do you want? I want to see you, Nichols. Oh, sorry, boys. I'm busy. You'll have to come back later. Yeah? All right, boys. Bust it open. All right, now, where's that envelope? What? It, it's in there, but... Watch him! Hello there. How did you get here? Oh, uh, Nick phoned me. Sure, as soon as I read the letter, I knew it was important. Is it a clue? Mm -hmm. Were there any fingerprints on this? Gun hidden where nobody suspects. I wonder where that could be. <laughs> Can't you guess? Do you know? Sure. <laughs> it was you who gave me the idea. I? Mm -hmm. When? Well, remember when you tried to pull the trigger of the murder gun with the boxing gloves on? Yes. Mm -hmm. But it didn't occur to you that the gun might have been inside? Just as in my play with the man's arm in the sling. Mm -hmm. One of the gloves might have had a hole in it. Mm -hmm. The chap knew he'd be washed up as soon as they slicked him, so he took this way out. Oh, no. But I looked at the gloves when I put them on. And I know there was nothing wrong with either of them. Yes, but how do you know that those were the real gloves? By that time, he'd have had plenty of opportunity to substitute others. Well, I guess that's that. Anyway, by the time you get down to your office, I'll have the champ in jail. Come? No thanks, cigarette. No thanks. I've got a plan that'll make up for all the mistakes I've made. Let the champ keep his fight date Friday, and before the fight's over, I'll point out the killer to you. You promise? Yes. If I fail, you can still arrest the champ. And as a forfeit, I'll go dancing with you anywhere you say, and pay the check. Anywhere? Mm-hmm. You're on. What, uh, what makes you so cocksure the champ didn't do it? Well, a person doesn't usually chew gum and whistle at the same time, does he? No. I don't follow you. Well, the champ always chews gum. And I just remember that the man who grabbed me in Althea's dressing room whistled softly, half to himself, like this. That's it. I remember now. The man in the cellar. He whistled that way. Mm. Well, I think maybe you've got something here. What you're going to do with it, I don't know. You wait till the fight's tomorrow night. I'll show you. This is the main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing. Introducing at 198 pounds, Champ Madison. seems to be in good shape tonight. Butch is trying to bore in for infighting, but the champ ties him up nicely. The referee breaks him apart. What are you doing here? The champ give me a seat. He and me are working in the same picture. Well, that's fine. Want a program? No, thanks. I've got one. Oh, Miss Ward, we're going nuts playing this thing so many times. Never mind. Play it again. Here's 
news, ladies and gentlemen. Even though Champ Madison won his fight, he's still the loser. Because I've just learned the DA is going to arrest him for last week's murder. So I guess that settles the stadium murder case and ends our broadcast. Nick Nichols speaking. Good night. He didn't piss off. All right, you go home with your brother. Any luck? No. No? Well, don't feel too bad about it. It's not as easy to pull rabbits out of a hat as you think it is. Come on, Filson, we'll get out of the dressing room and arrest the champ. Right. Come with me. You're a very clever young woman, Miss Ward. Too smart for your own good. There I go again. I've got to break myself of that habit. It might get me into trouble sometime. Why did you kill Ace Cummings? Because I won 40% of the champ's contract from slats in a poker game? I see. If Ace had won the fight, the contract wouldn't have been worth a nickel. That's right. Cigarette? No, thanks. I suppose Slats Keefe was another person too smart for his own good. He knew I killed Ace. Blackmailed me into giving him back the contract. So that's what was in that envelope. It was until I saw you at the post office. Come on, get a pencil and paper. You're going to write a letter to the district attorney. Come on, come on, come on, hurry up. Now, then write what I tell you. Dear Bill, I am the murderer you have been looking for. As I look back on it now, I realize I must have been crazy. Goodbye and forgive me. Now, sign that Polly Ward. Come on, sign it. That's right. Hmm, that's the finest confession I ever dictated. Nick, you don't intend to go through with this. Don't I? <laughs> oh, Bill. Well, that's the finish of Nick Nichols. It's almost the finish of Polly Ward. Not as close as you think. We followed you and Nick here from the stadium. Followed us? Yeah. I got suspicious when I saw him throw that program in your lap. Coupled with the fact that I found that when he told Dan Toby about Joe McHugh dying and had him turn the lights out, that McHugh wasn't even dead. Matter of fact, he didn't die for nearly an hour or later. So I figured that Nick must have had some reason for wanting to put the lights out when he did. Why didn't you grab him at the stadium? And lose my bet with you. <laughs> I should say not. No, sirree. Remember? You were going to point out the killer or take me dancing anywhere I wanted to go and uh, pay the check. Where do you want to go? The Royal Hawaiian Hotel at Honolulu. Good night, dear. Good night. Go ahead, go ahead and laugh. I'm going to open these things if it takes from here to Honolulu. Not on my honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 